Dear students, welcome back to Odelia Blogs. Today we are going to discuss module 1 part 2 and the contents are the following. Importance of management, scope of management, functions of management and approaches to management. We can first study importance of management. The first point is achieving predetermined objectives. We all know management always sets objectives and these predetermined objectives are communicated to the employees and efficient leadership is maintained to achieve these predetermined objectives. Second one is effective utilization of resources. Management tries to make effective utilization of various resources. The resources we know that are, they are very scarce in nature and hence management takes action and decides the best alternative way to utilize the resources effectively. The third point, development of resources. Management helps to develop both human as well as non-human resources. Through the development of resources, management improves the quality of lives of the people in the society. Next, to incorporate, okay, uh, next is integrating various interest groups. In every business organization, organization, there are various interest groups such as shareholders, employees, government, etc. These groups put pressure on an organization. Management has to balance these pressures from various interest groups. Fifth point, stability in the society. Management provides stability in the society by changing and modifying the resources in accordance with the changing environment of the society. Management provides integration between traditional systems and new innovations and safeguards society from the unfavorable impact of these new inventions or innovations so that continuity in social process is maintained. Last point is to incorporate innovations. Business organizations are moving from primitive to sophistication. It requires high degree of specialization, high level of competence and complex technology. All these require efficient management because survival of the fittest has become a symbol of efficiency. We can study scope of management. The scope of management is very wide. The various functional areas may classified into the following. One is financial management, second one personal, third production, fourth marketing and the fifth one is office management. Financial management seeks to ensure the right amount and types of funds to a business at the right time and at a reasonable cost. Finance includes cash and fund flow, application of different management tools to transcript the financial accounts in the form of management accounting which provides data for decision making. Cost of production occupies major portion in the outflow of funds. So, a financial manager must know the cost as well as financial accounting. As far as external finance is concerned, managing the creditors, investors along with the government strategies is also a major area where management has a wide scope. Second one is personal management. Personal management can be also called human resource management. It involves planning, organizing, directing and controlling the procurement, development, compensation, maintenance, etc. of the human resources in an enterprise. It consists of manpower planning, recruitment, selection, training and development, performance appraisal, compensation and promotion, employee services and benefits and personal records and again research and so on. Third one is production management. It refers to the management of production function in an organization. The production function in an organization are 
a function of land, labor, capital and organization. So it includes the production of right goods in right quantity at the right time and at the right cost. It consists of various activities such as designing the product, uh, deciding the location of the plant, buildings and the layout of the plant, operations of purchase and storage of materials, planning and control of factory operations, repairs and maintenance, inventory control and quality control, and also research and development. Next, we can go to marketing management. Marketing management refers to the identification of consumers' needs and supplying them the goods and services which can satisfy those needs. Okay, the next one is office management. Office management includes selection of office location, adopting appropriate office layout, staffing, function, smooth flow of work, office forms design, control office appliances and machines, giving best services from office to different people. Hope you understood. Next we can go to the functions of management. We have to, uh, first of all I will give you some introduction. Luther Gulick had given a keyword Podscorp. Actually, we had to write it as post D C O R B, but for the convenience to pronounce post scope is better. And it stands for planning, organizing, directing, staffing, coordinating, C O together. Remember that? Reporting and budgeting. Koontz and O'Donnell has suggested the functions of management as five planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. We can study in detail first one planning actually in module 2 you have a detailed study of planning and in module 3 you have to study organizing in the third module you have to study directing so we will just give a crisp idea regarding planning now okay planning is the most basic or primary function of management it precedes other functions because a manager plans before he acts Planning involves determining the objectives and selecting a course of action and to achieve it. It implies looking ahead and deciding in advance what is to be done, when and where it is to be done, how and by whom it is to be done. Second one is organizing. Once the plans are formulated, the next step is of organizing. Organizing is the process of establishing harmonious authority responsibility relationship among the members of the enterprise. The network of authority responsibility relationships is known as organization structure that you will study in module 3. Next, the process of organizing involves determining and defining activities required for the achievement of planned goals assigning duties to various specific, uh, specific positions, delegating authority to these positions so that the work is carried out as planned. Next, we can study staffing. Staffing is a process of filling up all the positions in the organization with adequate and qualified personnel. It involves recruitment, selection, training, placement, compensating, promotion, and finally, retirement of the employees. Next is directing. Directing is the managerial function of guiding, supervising, motivating and leading people towards the attainment of planned targets of performance. The manager must know how to direct others and he must be able to secure willing obedience from his subordinates. So directing can be also called as leading because it's the art of influencing people so that they work with interest and enthusiasm in order to achieve group goals. The last function is controlling. Controlling is a process of ensuring that the organization is moving in the desired action and that progress is made 
towards the achievement of goals it involves measuring actual results and comparing those actual results with the standards of performance finding out the reason for deviations of the actual from the desired and taking corrective actions when necessary in every organizations they will decide certain standards of performance and they will compare with the actual performance and if any deviations occur they will rectify and take corrective actions for that okay next it is a approach to management actually you have to study some theories regarding f w taylor henry fiol and all but i will give you just an introduction to our contributions of different management scholars uh, first of all the management scholars the first approach was classical approach it's just for your knowledge it's it will not come for your exam but just i want you to know because you are all management students you have to know classical approach was um, started around the year 1900 under this approach more importance is given to production instead of manpower it also believes that the employee is motiv uh, motivated by economic incentives this approach has three branches one is scientific management second one administrative management and the third one is bureaucratic management which i will teach in the next video neo classical approach this approach was developed around 1930 in which classical approach has been presented with some modifications the neo classical approach understands the importance of human resource in an organization this approach has two basic pillars one is human relations approach by elton mayo through hawthorne experiments and the second one is human behavior approach or human resource approach developed by mark Mary Parker Foulage and there are a lot of persons uh, McGregor Abraham Maslow and so on okay let's just for your information you have to know because these are the basics of management in MBA level you have to study all these approaches in detail for BBA you have to just study the contributions and that I will uh, teach in the next video now the last approach is modern approach modern approach was started in the year 1950 and the it this approach believes that employees work for numerous reasons including to achieve satisfaction happiness and decide lifestyles three uh, theories are there one is quantitative theory by churchman second one is systems theory by chester bernard and contingency theory by fred fiedler and uh, that you will study in fifth semester contingency theory and all uh, no need to worry now just i gave you an introduction regarding all these approaches i think you have understood uh, these these are the primary uh, portions in module 1 next we have to study the contribution of different management scholars first one we will study in the next video f w taylor who is the father of management taylorism or scientific management hope you understood thank you so much and if you have any queries you just uh, comment in the comment box thank you so much